another piece of advice is when it comes to brookie fishing or any kind of small stream fishing is tippet. Now tippet is usually the last, you know, whatever you want, 6 to 24 inches of line. I Normally I buy a extruded taper line, but I buy it heavy, like a 3x or 2x. Cut it a little bit short, make a loop, and then last uh, 24 inches or so I attach my own line. And the one that I use the most is uh, fluorocarbon on, on the small streams. And the reason for that is if you use a monofilin tippet, within 10 minutes of fishing, just being dragged on the rocks and stuff, it just turns white. It's, got, it's not resistant to abrasion. And as soon as it just rubs against rocks, it just turns white. And it's very visible in the water. Where if you take a fluorocarbon, you can fish, I kid you not, for three hours, drag it all over the place, on the dry land, in the water and everything, and then you grab it in your hand, and you pull it, and it just feels nice and smooth. It's not white, it always stays, stays, you know, nice and clear. And, uh, and basically what I use is, is, I buy a spool of, uh, just a normal fluorocarbon four pound line. I don't buy, for example, this is the, the, the tippet that I, this is for, I use for this, for bigger water. Like if I go fish uh, lower willow Wemac or beaver kill or never sink, this is what I use most of the time. I always use heavy tippets. I, I rather not catch fish than keep breaking them off and having them swim with a hook in their mouth. So I always go heavy, and I know you know a lot of people fish uh, 5x, 6x, even 7x, very thin uh, tippets. I only have two. That's the only two I carry. This is a four pound, which is for my brookie fishing, which is just uh, I think it's Barkley four pound fluorocarbon line. You get a hundred yards for five dollars. If I was going to buy actual tippet in fluorocarbon, I would have to spend probably fifty dollars for three spools because they're like $18 a spool. But when I fish uh, bigger rivers, I always fish with this one, which is just a normal 3X. And yeah, I don't catch as many fish because I use thick tippets, but uh, I don't care, you know, I'd rather not catch them. And, but when I do catch them, you know, I'll bring them in and release them instead of keep breaking them off. Another good tip when brookie fishing is, is not not fishing dry flies because uh, just the nature where you're fishing for brookies is fast water it always takes your fly under you're just gonna be false casting just all day long just to keep that fly dry to keep it floating and I find that I, I spend more time you know whipping around the fly just to keep it keep it dry than I am fishing so unless there's a nice hatch and you know, and the water is nice, I got nice deep pools, then I'll switch to dry fly. And uh, you know, and just the uh, water, this turbulent always sucks your fly under and making it wet and you can use all kinds of floatants and silicone powder and what whatnot, but it's just, it's, it's hopeless. You'll always have your fly sucked under and get it all wet, so I would stay away from dry flies, you know, try to use nymphs, try to use woolly buggers, streamers, uh, wet flies, whatever, you know, whatever it takes. But uh, you're going to spend a lot more time fishing and less time just uh, false casting just to keep it dry, so. Another piece of advice is you want to wear, ah, spider webs everywhere, uh, you want to wear clothing that, you know, they're just like a, a camel color, you know, I always wear brown, brown everything as much as possible except this little bag is dark blue. And sometimes I wear dark blue shirts. On a stream like this, you know, you, wanna, you don't want any bright colors because the water is so clean, fish can see you from a mile away. So it's just, you want to wear dark clothing, something that blends in, obviously. A hunting gear it's just the best and uh, and you'll do a lot better fishing wise so another thing you have to remember when you come to places like that 
let somebody know where you're going. I've been coming here seven years, I think, and I've never seen a single person, so if something was to happen to me, I'm screwed. So, you know, I let my wife know exactly where I am, where I'm parked, and where I'm going, so if you're single, you know, uh, let your neighbor know. Put a note with a little map where you're going and put it in the neighbor's mailbox. And say, hey, Frank, you know, if you don't see me by uh, 10 p.m., you know, call uh, New York State, DC, DEP, whoever you want to call, and, and let them know, you know, this is where I'm at. You know, I should be home by now, but I'm not. So, yeah, simple, simple note in the mailbox if you're living alone. Letting people know where you are because you never know. You slip, you break your leg or break your back, and uh, and you're unable to move. And next thing you know, you die out here because, especially in this case, my car is parked on such a little dirt road, dead end road. I don't think anything goes past this spot, so so it's not like there's going to be a lot of traffic uh, coming here. And noticing my car just sitting there for days. So, yeah, you definitely want to, and you want to carry stuff with you too. I always carry a whistle, I always carry a, a lighter, you know, so I can, in case something happens, I can start a fire, you know, stay warm. And, uh, and obviously, a whistle to signal somebody. Because you can only scream for so long. And then basically your voice box will just give out and you can't even make a sound. And somebody can be uh, 50 feet away from you and you have nothing. It'll, it'll just... <laughs> so a stupid whistle can save your life. And you know hiking out here it's definitely not easy. It's so easy to slip. I've been hiking my whole life. And, uh, and that still doesn't mean anything because I can still slip you walk around on a lot of big rocks that shift and move and and boy it's easy to go down if you're into small brookie fishing and beautiful little mountain creeks like this you gotta be able to hike a lot and be someone in shape I'm pretty much obsessed with cycling too. I ride my bike a lot. Uh, all kinds of cycling. I got, I got road bikes. I got cyclocross. I got mountain bikes. And uh, I race. Right now, I, I had some injuries, so this year I kind of gave up on racing. But next year I plan on racing again. Got to get in shape. But I still try to ride at least 5,000 miles a year, and uh, which helps hiking places like that, where you know I can walk up and down and I hardly ever get out of breath. So that definitely helps. So yeah, if you're willing to hike a lot, you get to fish places nobody else fish. <laughs>